Here's a Philco radio from about 1953 or so in a wooden cabinet. This has the standard broadcast band and what Philco referred to as the public service band. It's really not much on it anymore. The public service band runs from roughly 1.7 megacycles to 3.4 megacycles, but like I said, not much on it anymore. I don't know what the what the deal is with this radio. I would just uh, it was just brought to me, and I didn't like to get it playing again. So let's see if we can make that happen. Here's our chassis removed from the cabinet. This is a six-tube chassis with a three-gang variable tuning capacitor, which means this set has a tuned RF stage, which means it should be a good performer once it's working properly. Here's the underside of the chassis. It doesn't look like it's been monkeyed with too much. Here's our loop antenna and our speaker inside the cabinet. Now on these particular radios, the antenna and speaker are soldered in place. You can't just simply unplug them, so to make things easier, I just unsoldered the antenna and the speaker, and for testing, we'll use alligator clip leads to make the necessary connections. And then whenever I'm finished, I'll re-solder everything once I put the chassis back in the cabinet. Okay, let's get a baseline on this and see what we have to work with. I have the antenna and speaker clipped into place. I have the radio plugged into the uh, variable AC power supply. We'll bring it up slowly and see what we get. Now one thing I notice is this uh, 35W4 rectifier tube has gone to air and you can see it's cracked along the base. So either this tube was subjected to a pretty good physical shock to crack it or there was a major short which caused this tube to get unusually hot and cause the glass to crack. Let's see if we can find out which. Okay, before I replace the tube, I'm going to go ahead and replace this three-section electrolytic filter capacitor. It's a Philco branded part and looks very original to the radio. It's a 40 microfarad, 30 microfarad, and a 30 microfarad. It's a three-section. We just replace those with individual capacitors. And I'll also replace these paper capacitors just for maximum reliability. Okay, I have most of the capacitors replaced. And looking at this closer, I think I might have found out what caused the 35W4 rectifier tube to self-destruct. If you'll notice here, here's a bumble bomb capacitor that's blown apart. One side connects to circuit ground. The other end connects to pin 4 of the rectifier tube, which is the filament. So if that capacitor were to short, then I could very well see it causing the rectifier tube to blow up. So we'll go ahead and replace that capacitor, install a new 35W4, and then fire it up and hope for the best. Here's a better view of the exploded bumble bomb. As you can see, it's just a paper capacitor inside of a plastic case. These came out in the 1940s and were used up until probably the mid-60s or so. They were supposed to be an improvement over the old uh, wax paper capacitors of the 30s and early 40s, but actually they were a, they were a deprovement. They weren't an improvement because it seems like every one of these I find are either blown apart or when you test them for leakage, they test much worse than an old wax-covered paper capacitor from the 30s. Okay, well that sounds more like what a radio is supposed to sound like. Because guys are starting to send signals that they may wind up fixing the gators, and that's not just household cost for health care is up three to four thousand. on food
station coming in so that tells me that the front end is working pretty good okay what I'm going to do now is just let this radio play for a while and make sure we don't have any silver migration issues with these IF transformers hopefully we don't if we don't have any issues with those then we'll perform a few other steps to try to make this radio play just a little bit better and then we'll button it up and it'll be ready to go back home well we've been playing for about two two and a half hours now and no uh no thunderstorm effect so that means the if transformer should be okay uh, last thing i'm going to do is check the voltages on the audio output tube and the audio driver tube and make sure they're what they should be i think we should probably be getting a maybe a tad bit more volume out of this set and then if all that checks out then I put it back together and it'll be ready to go home okay checking our voltages on the 35C5 and yes I was using the socket test adapter for that makes it a little easier our B plus and our excuse me our plate voltage and screen voltages were running around 100 and 10, 115, that's not too bad, maybe a little high. Our cathode voltage is running around 5 volts. That might be a little low. I'm used to seeing about 9 or 10 volts on the cathode on these tubes. And when I check the tube on the tube tester, it is showing a little bit weak. And you can see I'm having to hold the tube in position with one hand and or one finger and press the button with the other finger because the socket in this tube tester is worn out and needs to be replaced. I guess I'll get around to that one of these years. All right, let's go find another 35C5 and see if uh, our situation improves any. Well, this 35C5 is much stronger. Let's put it in the radio and see how it performs. Very good reporting, and then okay, our voltages are reading about the same. Our audio sounds a little cleaner now, so I'll go ahead and leave this tube in there since it tests stronger than the one that was originally in there. Okay, looking at the plate voltage on the 12AV6 driver tube, we're running about 37 volts. That may be a little low, and that's most likely caused by a resistor that's gone up in value. Okay, this particular radio contains a device called a couplet that contains several components inside of this little package here. This particular couplet contains the plate load resistor for the 12AV6 the coupling capacitor that couples the plate of the 12AV6 to the control grid of the 35C5 and it also has the grid bias resistor typically 470K ohm that connects between the control grid of the 35C5 output tube and ground typically this is a 470K ohm resistor on the control grid to ground reading about 500 and we'll round it up to a nice figure 590k ohms so that's a little high and I'll have to pull a schematic to see what our plate load resistor on the 12AV6 is typically it's in the 330k to 470k ohm range well we're reading about 650k so that could explain our low B plus voltage now of course these couplets are no longer available but don't worry it's no problem to recreate one using conventional components. Okay, I peeked at the schematic for this set, and it seems that our voltages are about what they're supposed to be, and the resistors inside of that couplet are marked to be a little bit lower than what I'm measuring. So, you know, since our voltages are within tolerance, I'm not going to worry about doing anything to that couplet, it's just fine. Hitler. All I'm going to do at this point is touch up the alignment, and I probably won't even use a signal generator for that because it's really not that bad off, and then we'll call it done.
And here we are on our week 670 station. And it's coming in pretty good. So if that station's coming in, then I'd say this radio is working pretty good. that the United States ought to have. The president goes golfing. Boston, Georgia, Lowndes High School line. So I think we can put this radio back in the cabinet and send it back home to its owner. That station's about 90 miles away. At Quality PC, we know that the most important computer we will ever work on is yours. The Quran specifically speaks about infidels. There's 670 preached by some imams, many imams as a matter of fact, is a call to war. Well, I'm sorry. Have you... Now, show you one thing I had to do. For some reason, when I put this set back together, it started squealing and howling and motorboating on the upper end of the AM broadcast band from about 1200 on up. Well, I could touch the antenna lead inside of the radio, and it would behave perfectly. I could also clip a clip lead onto the antenna lead inside of the radio, and it would play perfectly. Uh, situating wires around didn't really help the problem outside of the cabinet with the antenna connected with alligator clip leads. It worked fine, as you heard earlier. So what I did, I just attached a a clip lead, soldered of course, to the antenna terminal inside of the radio and the motor boating and squealing went away. And if the owner happens to be in a poor signal area, he can clip a long wire outside antenna to this, give him a little bit better reception. But okay, that's about all I've got for this 1953 Philco. It works pretty good now. And our root problem was a bumble bomb capacitor that shorted and took the rectifier tube out. And then, of course, all of the other old paper and electrolytic capacitors were bad and leaky, and we had a bad 30, a weak 35C5 output tube. So I think it's it's good to go for a little while longer, a few more years, a few more decades. It might outlive all of us. Okay, thanks for watching and more to come later.